Why does every game use the same controls? And how did those controls come to be WASD? It's a cool story, so let's get into it. WASD. Utter that strange alien sounding phrase to a PC gamer and you'll get a smile of fond recognition. It's like intoning the password to a secret society, spouting forth some bit of arcane knowledge that shows your dedication to the cause. Clueless onlookers be damned. It's basically the most succinct way to describe PC gaming culture in its entirety. But say WASD allowed 20 years ago, even to a really dedicated gamer, you know, someone with an actual graphics card and who bought magazines every month for more info on that exciting looking Daikatana game. Say it to them and you probably get nothing. It's Mishima and he's got another Daikatana. But that's not possible. Oh, but it is, my dear. Yes, just like saying I can't even and then not finishing the sentence or using literally to mean the opposite of literally, WASD is an example of language that would baffle the population circa 2000. Because, and you might want to sit down for this, we didn't use WASD in the olden days. I know. But the story of how we came upon that holy quadrant of keys, that perfect ergonomic Tetris shape we've used to explore countless kingdoms and vanquish innumerable foes is an interesting one. It takes us through the dark ages before 3D happened, charts the rise of the mouse and the influence of what we now call eSports from as far back as the mid 90s. Before you go off and Google Dai Katana then, here's why we use WASD. Smash that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit the bell so you never miss out on an update from us here at Logitech G. No! When early humans first sat before computers to play stuff, they didn't do it with a mouse in their hand. While it's true that the invention of trackballs and PC mice do go back as far as the 1940s and that Windows 1.0 had mouse support, well, you've got to remember what mice were actually like back in the 80s and 90s. For starters, there was every chance that your given PC had a trackball mouse, as in you actually physically rolled around a big old ball on its axis to move the cursor. I don't know if you've ever played a shooter with a trackball mouse, but just in case you haven't, it feels like performing keyhole surgery with one of those giant foam fingers. And even if your mouse wasn't a trackball, you still weren't talking ultra high performance, laser sensored 9 gajillion DPI. They were basically trackball mice turned upside down, so you control the movement of the ball using an outer shell instead of flicking it round directly. All of that meant that using your mouse to aim, especially in the burgeoning first person shooter genre, wasn't the no brainer we see it as today. Wolfenstein 3D, Doom, Duke Nukem, all these games were controlled by the keyboard only when they first came out because mice just weren't there yet. They weren't precision tools for pinpoint flick aiming on caco demons, they were for clicking on the start button at your leisure. Let's take those early id and 3D Realm shooters as a case study. Everybody knows that they were among the first ever 3D games. I mean, 3D Realms even called themselves 3D Realms to emphasize the point. But it wasn't the same kind of three-dimensional space we know today in games. Doom was more like a clever pop-up book whose 2D sprites followed you around the screen so that you could never quite see their paper-thin side profiles. And Wolfenstein 3D, well, Good luck trying to find anything other than a right angle in this lot. These were angular, mathematically simple spaces, and navigating them required a totally different approach to controls than we use now. You know, because those spaces were built using a different approach to space and perspective. The problem was, game developers couldn't agree on what the controls should actually be. So you've got the vast majority of games, from racers to action games to shooters, just straight up not using mice in their control schemes. That meant you had to have both hands on the keyboard, not just one. Try that now. Just put your hands wherever feels comfortable on the keyboard. If you're right-handed, chances are you probably kept your dominant hand on the right-hand side of the board and probably on the arrow keys. It just makes sense, doesn't it? The arrow keys are out on their own, separated from the others so you don't accidentally knock them. The icons indicate movement and they sit nicely under your right hand. So what you often found in games during the 90s was that the up and down arrows moved you forwards and backwards, while left and right turned, not strafed, turned you this way and that. Except for all the games that didn't use that. System Shock mapped movement controls to A, S, D and X. 
Quake's default control scheme does actually use the mouse, but it maps it to moving forwards and backwards. Really, you push the mouse forwards to move. Unreal used the arrow keys, but unlike many games at the time, bound left and right to strafing instead of turning. Half-Life's controls did actually use WASD for movement, and we'll get to why in a minute, but also used page up and down to control your view vertically, even though it had full mouse support. And loads of games that did use mouse look inverted your inputs, even as far on as Halo in 2003. All of which is to say, when you loaded up a game for the first time, you basically had no idea how to move, or look around, or do anything. You had to look in the game manual to play your new game. And that was fine, because game manuals were brilliant years ago, and often included narrative stuff that you wouldn't find anywhere else. But look, that's a different video. The point is, there was no one agreed upon control scheme in games. Everyone was just coming out with whatever they thought worked best. All other games be damned. This is where Dennis Fong comes in. In 1997, he won John Carmack's Ferrari in the first ever Quake tournament. He went by the handle Thresh, by the way, which just feels so classy and dignified next to the modern gaming names like Grim Reaper 420 and underscore hyphen I shot your mum hyphen underscore of today. Anyway, Thresh was to Quake what Jimi Hendrix was to electric guitar, or Logitech G is to brilliant YouTube videos. He might not have actually invented it, but he established a way of playing it that became verbatim for basically every other FPS player evermore. The crucial part of the story here is that before he became the OG of competitive FPS gaming, Thresh played Quake without a mouse. It was only after a summer spent losing to his mate, who was using a mouse, that he decided to mix up his control scheme and migrated to mouse look. That meant he had just one hand for keyboard inputs, including not just movement, but jumping, swapping weapons, and everything else except looking around and shooting. Now, if you had hands like Slenderman, maybe you could do all that from your base over on the arrow keys, you know, flinging out a dexterous pinky over to backspace whenever you needed to reload but it's not very ergonomic, is it? For starters, it doesn't make much sense to bunch yourself up over on the right side of your desk when there's two thirds of a perfectly good keyboard going spare. Secondly, this is Dennis Fong we're talking about. Have you ever seen him play? This is a man who glides around Quake, making it look like Wipeout. Honestly, even though these were the early days of multiplayer tournaments, his matches are still every bit as incredible as watching Simple throwing his gun or Kaylee Kelly Kikuli his jump shot in dust in CSGO Pro matches. It's less like he's playing the game and more like he's rearranging the code with his mind every few milliseconds, aware of every pixel on the map at all times. In other words, he's not really going to be messing around with inefficient control schemes, is he? Fong experimented with EDSF and WXAD before landing on those four hallowed keys we now know and love. He'd even heard of other Quake players using Z, X, C and V for movement. Give that a try right now. Weird, isn't it? I can't even figure out which key would move which direction. It demonstrates just how much of a Wild West it was for controls at the time, and how important Thresh and his Quake contemporaries were for the popularization of a standardized, ergonomic FPS layout that made sense with mouse look, which, to be honest, we absolutely take for granted these days, don't we? Like an underground rock scene created by cool kids who eventually sell out to big labels, WASD went from being the layout of elite players, back in the day we called them L33T with two threes instead of E's, don't ask me why, to the default controls on any shooter you brought back from Electronics Boutique. Half-Life is widely credited as being the first to go with WASD and mouse look by default, and that's appropriate because Valve used the Quake engine, not Quake 2, the original Quake, to build their masterpiece in. You have to assume some of the developers there were pretty switched on to the competitive Quake scene and carried the layout over into their own game. Shortly after the release of Half-Life, Counter-Strike was born, and that mod proved, well, pretty popular in the end, didn't it? Then came Unreal Tournament and Quake 3 Arena, which galvanized the online multiplayer shooter as part of the fabric of our culture. And this might sound like it's overstating the importance of WASD, but it really was instrumental in the rise of that type of game. Yes, alright, everybody suddenly getting the internet and then realizing they could play against other people like live 
probably prove more instrumental. But just in terms of how you played those games, WASD opens up the possibility for certain techniques. Techniques that were once considered quite advanced. If you can believe it, circle strafing was once the preserve of only very skilled players. You know, that thing that you do instinctively everywhere you go now in shooters, using the A and D keys to move sideways while you gently move the mouse in the opposite direction to stay focused on a central point. Yeah, that. It's an absolutely inexorable part of our multiplayer FPS technique, and we owe it all to WASD. So, that's the story of why every game you load up today has basically the same control layout. And we owe it in no small part to one enterprising young Quake player who became a Ferrari driving, tournament winning forefather of WASD. Thank you, Thresh. But maybe that's not the end of the story. Who knows what innovations might force the movement keys or even that sacred left mouse button out of favor. Who's got a weird control scheme of their own? Inverters and custom binders, let's see you in the comments and let us know which was your first WASD game. Is Half-Life truly the first? As always, leave us a like if you enjoyed the video and we'll catch you next time. Well, I'll let you out, but I'm warning you, it's hell out there. It's completely under military control. You'll have to sneak and fight your way from one end to the other, and I don't expect you'll meet many of our peers along the way.